Uh, what I'll uh, talk a little bit about is uh, the relationship between bicuspid aortic valve and some uh, problems that we encounter in neurosurgery. And uh, really the main thing I'll be talking about is brain aneurysms. The other problem that patients with bicuspid aortic valves may have are uh, dissections, not so much of the aorta, I don't deal with those, but dissections of the artery in the neck or of the brain. And um, a brain aneurysm, if it ruptures, usually the first symptom that a person has is a really, really bad headache that comes on very, very suddenly. Um, then many other things can go wrong. But that's sort of the first symptom that most people have. The first symptom of a dissection of an artery in the neck is uh, acute pain either in the front of the neck or the back of the neck, and then usually a headache that's really on one side or the other side. Um, so if you encounter anything like that, people who know they have a bicuspid aortic valve uh, should really be aware of that. Now, in addition to those two types of uh, sort of unique headaches, uh, another, another group of uh, people who have uh, treated with bicuspid aortic valve uh, are patients with spinal fluid leaks in their spine. And uh, it might seem a little bit odd that that can happen, but some people have little cysts in their spine and they start leaking spinal fluid without any you know, obvious trauma. And uh, that causes the type of headache, uh, most characteristically, that essentially goes away when you lie down. And as soon as you get up, you start having a bad headache. So those are sort of the three uh, unique types of headaches uh, that people with bicuspid aortic valves uh, can encounter. And what we did is we looked at uh, 61 people with a bicuspid aortic valve, uh, all adults, um, and we screened them with either an MR angiogram or a CT angiogram. And then I compared that to a group of people uh, who have come to our office uh, with either a brain tumor, we see a lot of brain tumors in our office, uh, or people who come in with, with headache, but not the typical headache of, a, of an aneurysm. And that was a, a group of 291 patients. Now, when you compare those two groups, uh, age is a little bit higher in controls. Um, women is a little bit more common in controls. And when you compare the frequency of aneurysms between the bicuspid aortic valve group and the control group, that's important to remember because uh, we know that the older you get, the more likely you, uh, you are to have an aneurysm. And we also know it's more common for women to have an aneurysm uh, compared to men. But in spite of those two factors being more common in controls, uh, there was an obvious uh, increased uh, risk of aneurysms in people with a bicuspid aortic valve. And out of the 61 people with a bicuspid aortic valve, uh, six of them, about 10%, had an aneurysm. And of the 291 controls, uh, three of them uh, were found to have an aneurysm. So it's about 10 times more common in people with a bicuspid aortic valve. So uh, even though it says here what are the recommendations for screening, um, I don't really know if those are true recommendations, but I think that uh, you know, for those of you with a bicuspid aortic valve, it's something that you, you can consider. Um, we know that the risk is about tenfold that of the, of the general population, but that still means that you know, there's a 90% chance that a person with a bicuspid aortic valve does not have an aneurysm. Uh, but if you do want to be screened, uh, you know, we wouldn't really recommend it for anybody uh, under the age of 18 just because the, the chance of finding something in somebody that young is uh, essentially zero. And we usually don't recommend screening uh, in people over 70 uh, here in this country. And then, uh, you know, because you're not born with an aneurysm and it's really just something that comes on later in life, uh, having a normal angiogram at some point in life doesn't really guarantee you from never getting an aneurysm. So in general, uh, we recommend repeating the, the screening test uh, every 10 years or so until you reach the age of 70.